I began very, I became very motivated to study mathematics because mathematics helped me to understand that not only about distance, about speed of things, about how uh, the number patterns which we began to see from my mother conveying and communicating number patterns without ever formulating any kind of uh, mathematical equation. I also began to see when we studied the whole idea of moving targets, that the Earth is always moving. Most of us do know that the things that we do do now are never anywhere closer to what we studied before. That actually means that we cannot be able to target what we actually see and aim for it because it's going to move by the time we get there. One of the things that became very useful for me when I studied mathematics was this whole concept of approximation. Most of us have actually come across the concept of approximation. What that means, in short, is that there was this kind of thing called pi. Most of us have come across pi. Pi is simply an approximation. It's a number which is 22 over 7, which gives you a very complex kind of uh, response there. It gives you that kind of uh, answer, which goes on and on and on. And most of the mathematics, you actually catch that and say, look, let's just approximate to pi 3.14, which is not the exact number. But pi has been used to calculate the areas of circumference, the areas of circles, or any circle, which actually means the answer that you get is not the exact answer because it's an approximation, but it is however accepted. Today, we actually have 22 over 7, which is 22 over 7 there as a, as a pi day, which is a holiday, actually, if you didn't know that. Pi, 22 over 7 is a holiday in celebration of pi. Now, we, can't, we, we actually estimate pi, and we, when we look at that, it's close enough for us to accept that. There is a lot of things that we can begin to understand on the power of approximation, because it's close enough. You don't have to be the exact one, but then it is close enough. Most of us do use mathematics, even without necessarily realizing that we are very mathematically oriented. And we calculate, we do carry out lots of computations. I will show you a little bit of those kind of examples and show how we draw a lot from that to actually build anything that is very complex. Martin Cooper, who invented the first cell phone there, was actually felt that it was close enough. I mean, it was close enough. So much has actually been built on that. We actually see the first machine there. That's what it looked like, the first Apple. Now, a combination of what we see before, what we see there and that has actually led to lots of other things. But that was an approximation to what we see now. Now, of course, so much has actually changed and moved on. Now, it was amaz amazing to see that when we look at uh, uh, different kinds of people wanting to buy a combination of those today, they would never have actually flocked to buy what we've actually seen. But today, we actually move from what was approximated to something that is much more complex, to something that there is now. What am I actually trying to communicate here? Is that if we look at the kind of technologies that people put together, like the rail line, most of that kind of rail that we see, which most of us do use, or a number of people do use, on its own, it does not make sense. We actually see that it's just some steel on its own. It only begins to make sense when you see that uh, things are moving on them, the trains move on them. Now, that again on its own doesn't necessarily make logical sense for us. It only begins to make sense when you actually make some meaning based on that, when you see some kind of a map that you can be able to use. Now, to use this, for anyone to actually effectively make use of uh, any kind of rail, you actually approximate the closest distance to the rail station. You choose, you actually approximate that. You approximate the actual time when the train is going to, sh you should be able to get on and approximate the actual destination. That is approximation. It's not the exact one because no one leaves at the station per se, but you approximate, you go to the closest one. Now, when you actually see how people use approximation in real life, you actually see that they actually, once they've understood the meaning of those kind of network, they go to the right place at any given time and they flock there, they make the most of those because they can approximate. Now approximation also allows us to understand that when we use technology or when we look at different ways in which people use technology, most of the things that we learn at cognitive level are those that are approximated to what we know already 
In other words, you only begin to register things that are meaningful and closely related to what approximates to what you know. If you learn something or you understand something, it doesn't matter how many things one is actually involved with. The only thing that registers out there are those things that are approximated to what you know already or to what you want to be able to create. Now, this is quite useful because if we can be able to approximate, we can be able to build something and imagine things that make meaningful um, uh, movement. Now, if, if, if you are going to be able to develop anything that is meaningful for this person here, you should be able to approximate to what they know or what they are really interested in uh, understanding. Now, that also helps us to understand that when you look at uh, different ways in which people imagine or different ways in people think about the possibilities, if we look at this, we actually see that anything that one is talking about can only come from what they have. In other words, you cannot be able to speak from what you don't have. You can only speak from what you know. You actually approximate all the things that we talk about because it's, we can only talk about the things that are approximately uh, related to what you actually have in your mind. Now, that is useful because if you actually have anything here, if you are going to bring or innovate anything that is meaningful for them, it must be approximated to what there is already. Now, if you are going to create anything that is useful, you should be able to approximate to the needs of the people or to the needs of what people actually relate to. In other words, you cannot be able to find anything that is meaningful unless you can be able to bring and understand uh, what people care about and what people really find as being meaningful. I have actually drawn from all these to begin to understand how you can innovate and how you can bring about collective thought to create imaginative, uh, ima imaginative products or imaginative uh, uh, things that you want to be able to create. Now, that is useful in the sense that when you look at these two, uh, the chick and the hen, there are so many things there that they are actually grappling with or there are different kinds of possibilities. The only thing that would be meaningful in all these are those that are approximated to what they think is meaningful to them. If you look at that, they are able to pick from the so much, they can only pick what they think is actually approximated to what they see as being meaningful and of value to them. Now, we have actually drawn on this to create what I have actually called a, a sand pit. I've created a sand pit which allows one to actually play around with the different possibilities of what they care about and what they actually meaningfully uh, would, would find value to make a difference to their social being. I will be able to mention this in the sense that the core part of anything that is approximated, anyone here cares about whatever they think is meaningful to them, it, of, of, of which they consider as being of value. They bring that collaboratively and think about how they can be able to join these together. I'll be able to then talk about how that in, in this whole thinking, how do we begin to understand and extract the best from the what people imagine and what people create? What we have here is that I have put together a, a, an initiative at the University of Cape Town which allows people to uh, think about and collaboratively build something that is meaningful or if you like create some some create some kind of uh, meaningful imaginative products. And that's through a sandpit kind of model. Now, one of the things that makes a difference in there in that in, is, is the aspect of empathy. The key difference between empathy and what we know already is that it is a difference between thinking about a product and imagining one and creating one and taking it to the people and then allowing people to organize themselves around that kind of product and beginning with the people and understanding what their needs are and then creating something, co-creating something with them so that what they create is meaningful to them. And that is the aspect of the empathy. Now, empathy is being able to stand in somebody's shoes so that you can be able to understand what they care about and what they really see as being of value. You then be able to think about the different possibilities of seeing the world from what they've actually seen, from, from having created the empathy, you want to be able to see the world from the other people's perspective. And that allows one to actually come up with a core, um, I, what we call ideation, and that comes from the design thinking um, um, model. The whole idea of ideation is allowing people and assuming and understanding that every person is a rational being and that they do have something that they can be able to contribute to anything that they can be able to, anything that they see of value. They can co-create and co-imagine things and co-produce what they need to be able to produce. 
The other aspect of it is how do you begin to learn from the different possibilities of what people care about? And how do you be begin to take action on those things? And how then do you build something that is meaningful? The key difference between the different ways and different approaches to problem solving or different approaches to uh, creating innovations and using this kind of model is that this model starts with people. The other kind of approaches starts with things and then you take the things to people. And that's the key kind of difference. What we are doing in this, in this kind of space is to allow people that can be able to have imaginations and they don't have to be perfect imaginations. They don't have to create something that is complete. They can be able to use approximation to create something that is close to the needs of the people and then take that to the people and allow that to be able to grow and cultivate and build on that. That is the kind of relationship between approximation and imagination and creativity and innovativeness that comes together in what I have actually called a sand pit. A sand pit, most of us do know about sand pits as being a, a play place. Now, a sand pit allows one to create models which you can be able to discard if you don't like them and at low cost. Sand pit model then allows one to be able to imagine things, prototype, test things out, go back to the people and extract and understand what people need rather than assume and take what you think is a solution to the people and allow people to organize themselves around that kind of product. Most of what we have here in Africa does require that we engage and co-produce whatever innovation which is meaningful to the people. And to be able to do that, we should be able to begin with empathy, which is an appreciation of where people are and an appreciation of what they consider as being important. And also being able to understand that every human being is rational. They know things. They do work with things. They may not call it number patterns, but they do know how to imagine. They do know how to create things. They do approximate. They don't have to have any kind of mathematical kind of background, but they do know how to compute stuff. Mathematically, they engage with that. Once we, are, once we recognize that, we are able to tap into the creativeness and the imaginations of people and then bring that together in a multidisciplinary kind of fashion and build things that are meaningful to people and build things that, are, that can be able to make uh, a difference in the social world. That then is ATLAB. Thank you very much.